Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to welcome everybody for joining us today. This is the new normal on a Tuesday um, in July, a few days before we celebrate 67 minutes of Tata Madiba. Yeah, woke up to sad news of the passing of uh, Ambassador uh, Zinzi Mandela, who is uh, with us no more. We'd like to say to the Mandela's family, uh, and Matigizela's family, may her soul rest in peace. Uh, we mourn with you. And what a sad time um, to leave us where we cannot even pay our last tribute and salute you. But we are with you in spirit um, and our guest as well. We want to uh, also convey the same message from Los Angeles, Bishop Noel Jones and the family at City of Refuge. So I do know America do share and stand in solidarity with our struggle. When we mourn, they mourn. We're gonna be going on a journey. We um, have incredible guests joining us in studio, and I want to get this name right. You know, the 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 the, the first name I got it right, but I want to welcome um, our sister, the Mister our Lady, who's with us today, um, Sis Yvette Rachikop. You must say it from your chests. I'm going to say it from my chest. Rachikopa. Let me say it again. <laughs> Yvette Rachikopa. And the, and the concept of Ra. Ra. is actually Egyptian. That's Kemet. Ra, Masad, which means that the sun. My name is Mara, Ra. And ah. all the names that end up with that Ra, Ra, actually have the Kemetic uh, connection to the great. Are you serious? Yes. Mm. Dumela Ra. I Ra, see. Chivenga, Ra, Mukopa. Incredible. So, Rachikopa will be... Yeah. Uh, Chukopa is aloe vera. Aloe vera. Yeah. Venda, yeah. Oh, so, venda. Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's beautiful. You gotta love that, man. And uh, so the sun on aloe. Yes, I feel very special now. <laughs> now let's double it up and welcome Bishop Joshua Ma Ra 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 Ma Ponga. <laughs> <laughs> Joining us today. Just want to recap. Uh, we spoke about breaking your limits last time and living life out of fear. But tonight we follow up on ways we can get to curb the fears we tend to live with. Most of us, you know, the level of anxiety is so high because you, you, everyone has a friend, family member or someone close who has contracted this virus. Mm -hmm. You know, a month ago, it was making headlines, but it was something far-fetched. I had to witness two close family members uh, trying to fight this pandemic, and it claimed both their lives. So it's beyond real, mm. because we are asking ourselves, who's next? But then the Bible says, um, whatsoever things are of good spirit, whatsoever things are true, uh, true um, whatsoever things are courageous, set your mind on such. We cannot make any significant inroads in society apprehensively. We have to be positive. We find ourselves in a situation, and that's why we're here tonight. We could have sat home, say, hey, the cold front is too strong, mm -hmm. and the numbers are too high, but you're here. So let me welcome you. I'll also be welcoming Bishop Noel Jones, Who's joining us this evening out in Los Angeles? Let me start with my uh, guest uh, tonight. Say thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. How have you dealt with you know, the horror of trying to survive in such tough times? I think it's something that you said that was interesting in the beginning, that, that we, we're living, we have to be positive, mm -hmm. right? And for me, I don't think it's a matter of living, being positive. I think it's a matter of creating your own truth, yeah. right? And maybe that is positivity in a sense. But okay. for me, I think it's just been, I don't know. I, I when, when this whole thing started, I stepped within because I'm not a person that likes to go outside, you know? Yes. So if you go on social media, everybody's panicking. I know that the positioning that I've put myself as, as a healer, as a teacher, which has its own <laughs> um, things, you know, yeah. Right. But when you've positioned yourself that way, you have to carry yourself differently or have a different vibration or energy. So for me, I went within and I just had my conversations with the divine mm. and 
it was just about adapting or changing things and of course there's times where it gets tough like you know when you want to leave the country and go like on a vacation yes. and you're like oh oh i can't leave <laughs> that's yeah. when it's like really tough because i love nature i love being around nature right um so for me it's just been a thing of it's it's, it's there's the stuff that's going on around you and then there's the truth and reality that you create by the thoughts that you have and what you choose to focus on and all of that. So I t- I was living in my own world before COVID. Mm-hmm. I'm continuously living in my own world now. Mm-hmm. And that is a world that way in my own mind I create that safety. I create that that thing of knowing that whatever is happening things will work out for my good. I'm and with you. and just being in a space of acceptance it yes. gets challenging and then you have to bring yourself back in right? right because you can either like you quoted a bible verse in the be- in the beginning right. you can either be in the world right? right or you can be within okay and that within sometimes we call god sometimes we call universe right. sometimes you call it many things right so for me i tend to just go within and that is where you my space your, of safety you find your is space yeah. of safety i hear you we have bishop noel jones whom i like to also welcome this evening thank you bishop for joining us and thanks again for making the time um, as we speak about uh, the, our focus today being on healing um, we have a culture of going to church every sunday like a car you know if i need service in the next six days, I can walk through the city of refuge, get a dose of um, encouragement, get a dose of um, st- strengthening. Now that we're dealing with this pandemic and we can't even see our spiritual leaders face to face due to this lockdown, how do we preach the message of healing enough for people that are infected? for people that are dealing with close family members and watching friends collapsing and there's no place of refuge. Bishop. One of the things that's significant is that if anybody has grown over any period of time, having listened to the word for 2000 years, it would seem to me that we would have developed the kind of presentation that anticipates the total situation that man can find himself in. Uh, One of the Mm -hmm. scriptures that I think is significant here is that there is nothing that happens to people within the parameters of the church that is not such as, and I'm quoting the scripture, such as common to man. The situation is that many Christians believe that they are outside of the catastrophic extirpation that comes upon the world. But the truth is that faith operates within the confines of everything that happens in the human arena. So faith, biblical faith, is the kind of faith and biblical teaching and understanding is the kind of teaching and understanding that says, I have to be equipped for whatever is going to happen in the world. So what I'm saying now is, again, I point to leadership and the presentation of those who carry the word and that is that we have not taught people the biblical truth because faith operates in human existence on every level so whenever I declare I know God then I know myself because God is in me and I have the capacity to overcome everything healing has to begin with what you and how you think of yourself in any particular situation. And that's the healing. Healing is not just something that's hocus pocus that's going to happen mystically. It's healing has to operate within the psychological disposition that you have towards the situation that you're in and your individual capacity to handle it because of your faith in God. It's, it's, yes, it's, sir. it's a serious thing. Theology and psychology has to be in dichotomy or else we'll just be sitting in a building, listening to a lot of words, hearing a lecture and walking out the same way we came in. At the end of the day, healing begins in my own heart with my own concept of God as it relates hey. to my concept of myself. Bishop Maponga, can you heal in isolation? To many of your listeners out there, this might sound unfamiliar for me to say and share a story of the Roman centurion who who comes to the Messiah with a sick daughter. Yes. And um, he presents his case that my daughter is, is sick and finds the Messiah busy. And the Messiah says, and while he's working on other things, that it, it looks like the, there could be a delay mm-hmm. in him attending to the problem. Okay. But I love the Roman centurion when yep. he says... I'm a man of power. Okay. 
I say to a thousand, a hundred soldiers, move, right. and they move. Okay. You don't need to come to my house. Say a word, like I do mm. with my soldiers. Yeah. I can just say a word, yeah. and wherever they are, business will happen. But if these are truly men, servants of God, right. that we don't need physical contact with them, say a word. From wherever you are. Right. And the Messiah responds. Yeshua responds and says, I've not seen faith like this in the entire in entire Israel, where men could have faith in me standing here to send a word back to his house. I hear you. And his child could be healed. Yes, sir. So the whole mentality for the past two thousand years of church mm. and ecclesiastical structure right that church is found within a denomination within an address within a presence going going in and out of church taking right. a register right. and etc okay we are moving into a space now which i want to call let me speak like a prophet okay which i want to call the roman the roman centurion faith mode right where you don't need the man of god to come within the space of your function. I'm with you. If you hear the word, yeah. <laughs> it will be well with you. The problem that we have, why being absent is so difficult, is because we have not empowered anyone. And the reason we haven't empowered anyone is because independence is frowned upon. So it is discouraged. That's why Karl Marx says that the religion is an opiate of the people. It becomes okay. an opium, it becomes a drug. Because what we do is we don't empower people to be able to stand on their own two feet because it causes us to feel insecure. When we are not needed, see, I, I believe this, in relationship, I will tell anybody, don't ever be in a situation where you are needed because people can hate who they need but they can't hate Yay. who they appreciate. The system here right. is to appreciate the saint, to edify the saint, you. to bring the saint to understand that not only do you have the character and the strength to overcome any situation with or without me, with or without me, because I am not the significant piece. As the Bishop Punga said, it's the word that makes me strong. It's the word right. that sets you up. And if, you're, if I deliver a word that is a rock word, uh, I, I might say, that upon this rock, I build my church. I have a piece of the yes, rock. Sir. And if I have yes. a piece of the rock, I'm not movable. The storms may come, the winds may blow, but the house that stands on the rock, it is Woo! not. Preach, it's preacher, not, preach, preacher. On. I'm with you. Jones, come yeah, on, where have you no, been? Open the door. It is not the condition of the house that's significant. It is not the house yes, sir. which stands the storm. You will lose All a few, right. you will lose a few shingles, you might lose a few windows, but hey! the house is coming down. Yes, sir. Hey! Come Thank on, you. Jones, where Thank have you, you been? Mpunga. Thank you, Mapunga. I want us to go to Pretoria for two seconds. Abigail, good evening. Hi. Good evening. How are you guys? Bless, darling. Get into the point. So for me, what happened actually during Corona, it's been such a blessing because the isolation in itself created a platform for me to heal. I was faced with myself and I had no distractions. And as a result, I had to deal with demons from my past. I had to deal with demons that I've been just hiding and pushing away because I was just too busy. So what this time for me did, it's a platform for me to heal. And as a result, I realized that there's a lot of things that I had thought I had hey. dealt with because I was just not focusing on, you know. And at the end of the day, I became a mess. Within the third week of lockdown, I became a mess, and I finally had the courage to say I am going to see a therapist. And I, I don't know how many days later, I'm probably I don't need her anymore. I've made such huge, huge progress. But for me, I think it has been the greatest blessing. It's not about um, it's not about having face to face contact. I think the most important thing as well that I've noticed that sustained me throughout is. I always had my own personal relationship with God. So most people rely heavily on, on their pastors or their religious leaders, and I'm very, very Christian, by the way. Um, 
that they do not have their own personal relationship with God. Point I read taken. my Bible Point every taken. day. I start my day with reading my Bible and praying and just meditating on the Word of God. And I underestimate it, the power of doing that. Beautiful, beautiful. Happened. Thank you so, so for me. It, it, it did a whole lot of healing for me. Thank, thank you, so you. Thank you. I'm glad we got someone who took the situation that was meant to be negative positively. But Sis Yvette, you're going to have to be part of this. And Bishop, I need you to, to I want to take you back to the point you made. You spoke about uh, being appreciated instead of needing. People can, can, people can mistreat what they need. Isn't that the reason why blacks, and I want to use us as an example, don't you think it's the same relationship we have with money and wealth creation that we need it so much, we end up not working or appreciating it, it and as a result is it do I, am i qualified to assume that blacks have a toxic relationship with wealth generation i would say um i think people are operating from lack not really from need people like, operating from, from lack from lack uh -huh. because in your mind yes. you believe that money is not something that you can attract into your life okay and you have this history i don't think it's a thing of when you say black people, we have a history of not having money because we were not given access to it. Okay. Right? And everything that has happened to us has said you're not good enough. Right? You don't deserve good things. Right. Right? And then now, when we get to a point where we we have this thing, we can't keep it. Right. Right? Because we don't believe that we deserve it. Okay. So we push it away and we, we constantly have this, it's a talk, you see, the same way that you can attract a relationship into your life, like right. a romantic relationship or a job. Right? But then you have this mindset of lack that everything that comes into my way will not stick. Mm. Right? That job will not stick. That, that p the partner would not stick that abundance of finances will not stick, well, you act from fear. When right. you act from fear and lack, right? You either go and go and spend all the money that you have because you're like, you have to do this or you're trying to earn people's love or you're trying so to- So how do I know that I appreciate word. it? How do you what? How do I know that I appreciate it? How do you know that you're appreciated? Yes. I think it starts with appreciating yourself. No, is it, is it, is it, is it, does it reflect when I, when I keep it for long? Mm -hmm. How do I know I've reached that point that I'm operating? My, my, the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing is because uh, money is a byproduct. Mm. It's not something that I'm getting because um, lack thereof. Mm. Uh, uh, Bishop, you want to help out? Of course I'll help out. Uh, to, to, I, I think it's very unfair to make it seem as if the majority of black people around the world in the globe, or the majority of people, period, in the globe, has access to the opportunities that the Caucasian dominant culture has. So okay. consider with me the fact that you come into a little money by happenstance or because of your physicality, your basketball skills, your football skills, your, yeah, it's all physical. So you have been given money based on giftedness, not based on character development, not based on old money inheritance. So okay. because you have had nothing for so long, as soon as you get something, the first thing you do is consume it by buying goods to give you a sense of significance from the outside because you've never ever had the opportunity to be indulgent because you have always been poor. So as right. soon as you get something, you spend it, not realizing that there's an end to every dollar you can get. So everybody should be taught to put something aside. Now let me say this and I conclude. Right. Most of us, no matter what level we're on, we have more debt than we need to have. Most of us. Mm. I don't care mm. whether you're making a hundred uh, thousand rand a year or five hundred thousand hey. rand a year. Black folk are in debt because they have to spend what they have. They have to floss it. They have to show other people how much they have. They have, have to do because yeah. that's what gives them a sense of who they are. I don't buy anything I can't afford. Do you share the same thoughts, Yvette? Uh, because I, I, I had a very heated debate with a friend that said, black people, we loud. And, and Bishop says, like he says, some, some of us, 
want to make that loud expression. Of course. The, to assume that we've arrived. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I do agree. Um, I think we just said the same thing, but in different words. Okay. That it's a self-worth thing. Yeah. And when you come from a space where you, you first of all, there's a generational thing of not being, that hasn't, we haven't been passing on um, knowledge in terms of finances because we didn't have it. <laughs> so your parents can't pass on something that they don't have. It's just, that's it, right? They pass so, his tagas in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm. which is also great because it's important. we need to know who we are, yeah. right? But let's um, talk resources. So resources in terms of that, people can't, you can't, when, when a person comes into this earth, it's yeah. the same thing whether it's relationships, um, black people's relationships are suffering because mm. why the the fathers had to be migrant workers how do you expect relationships to be built on that right, right. so now the parents cannot pass on certain relationships teachings right so same thing with money right if you don't have money if you didn't have access to a bank that's the, the south african story yeah. how do you pass on knowledge as to how do you use money yeah. and then now your identity right you don't even have an identity because the thing that the biggest attack on black people or african people mm -hmm. or african americans is about our worth Right, and everything else that happens around our lives is based on the fact that we do not know who we are. Right. We think we're not enough, so we go and spend just like the bishop said, right? So that we can earn our worth, right? So if you look at a lot of people who, I've, I, as a coach, right, I've worked with people that come in for financial advice. I don't do that. First of all, I don't give advice. The answers are within the person. Secondly, right, I like when that. you tap into the deep hole why, you find out that this person, the reason they're spending is because in their childhood, they're treated like they're not good enough. And then as an adult, Adult. Now they spend because they want to fit in. They mm. want to be accepted. They want to be loved. So you. the bigger need is to I, to accept themselves, right? Because Africans, we've been taught to reject ourselves, right? And then, I, or either your parents were taught to reject themse themselves, and then they reject you. Yeah. And they reject you, right? You reject yourself. When you reject yourself, you reject success. You re reject money. You d reject love. You reject joy, uh -huh. right? Okay. So that is the deeper thing to say that the identity and the self worth is the reason why people try to use these things. All right. To kind of earn the acceptance, the love, the joy, you know. I'm with you. And that, that's what it's about. I, I, I like that. I want to take it to another level. Uh, three days ago was Sunday evening. Headlines. Um, China wrote a letter to the vice president of the United States advising U.S. to uh, retreat and leave Africa alone because China has more reserves in Africa than the U.S. does. And you said something about appreciating your value. Mm -hmm. If two superpowers during a pandemic can fight over a continent, a dark continent like Africa, as they say, if two superpowers are at war over who has more reserves on this continent, can't we translate, use that conflict as a wake-up call to realize our worth? How do we take that observation and say, here's China, here's USA, mm -hmm. both fighting, not each other, mm -hmm. but fighting on who has more mm -hmm. in this continent? Surely there's got to be value then. Bishop. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness and all these things mm. will be added unto you. Maybe my introduction would be that actually the Lord wants us to have things. Mm which is the good part of life, mm -hmm. the softer things of life. Mm -hmm. So we cannot be preaching Christianity and religion as that of poverty, meager resources, and having nothing. Okay. But having said that, okay. when you educate an African mind to say your value is found by what you put on, yes. then I will go and get a polo jacket. I will go and get a Gucci glasses. Right. Because in my head, when I have these valuable goods on me, I'm then somebody. my value, my value is pitched with the brand that I'm putting on. Right. Not because I'm valuable, but the brand that I'm putting on is valuable. I have an S500 parked in my house, mm. bulletproof, a presidential one. Mm. I can put a pig in that, in that car yes. and drive it to Senten and bring it back to Benoni. Right. It will still be carrying a pig. Because a pig does not become a human being because it's sitting in an expensive car. Okay. If okay. you are cheap, you are cheap. Yes, sir. Even if you have the best brand on you. Yes, sir. It does not change. All right. So when you begin to look at American war and Chinese war, yes. fighting over resources, my question is, does the African leader know the value which the West and the East are fighting over? You got to understand this. Jesus gives us value when he died on the cross. 
but he died on the cross for a relationship with us for human beings. America and China is not fighting over the individual people who are in Africa. So when America okay. is fighting over with China over Africa, it does not increase my individual value as a human being because okay. they're not fighting to enhance and to embellish my life. They're not yes, fighting sir. to make me a better person. They're Yay. fighting to steal and to take all of the resources that we have. The point that Mapunga is making, I think that is very essential to all of us, is this. What America and Chinese people are fighting over, we have it under our feet. Yeah. So we should take on the attitude of the of of the Saudis and our response should be we are going to form an OPEC kind of a group and we're going to determine how much you take out of here, how much you get. They don't uh. want you, they want what you have and you're too hey, and hey. you're too silly to know it. So they yes, give chef. you a few trinkets, they give you a few trinkets, and you give them the whole works. How do you secure transformation? Allow me, allow me. When do. your time is so limited. Allow well, me to no, bail no, on this if one. You, if you give me a chance on this, because it's, it's significant for us to understand what is the systemic problem in our culture and particularly in okay. Africa from a political, financial, socio, just socio-political point of view, and, and that which it would, should include finances. What we should understand is that there is a significant systemic problem that has been generated for years and years and years and years. And the okay. mindset now for healing and for continued healing it's for us to understand, first of all, that we need to come together as a nation because we, as a nation, intellectually can grasp and really physically and financially, we understand how we have been treated as a nation. Okay. What we need then is to have leaders who realize that we have to place in the next leader or all of us should understand generationally where we need to go. So when the next leader comes, he does not dismantle what was done the five Let's previous years. Like what he, happened to Obamacare. But he builds on what is done because it is not about him proving he was better than the guy before him or right. he can take more out of the country or grab more from a narcissistic, egomaniacal point of view. But if we are operating for the benefit of our people, we have got to build on each person's advances and, and have a sustainable and achievement. I think we've made this point before in one of our dialogues, and I'd like to bring in something in line with today's conversation, Bishop. I got yeah. somebody all the way from speaking on healing. And I haven't forgotten your point. Newa is a victim of rape and is out in Soweto. Good evening, Newa. Welcome to the new normal. Talk to me. Hi, how are you? You know, I'm blessed when you call and I got Bishop Maponga Jones and my sister Yvette. Talk to us. Thank you very much. Uh, just firstly, I am a survivor because of God's grace and God taking me out of victimhood and me overcoming so um, the, the, the biggest, the first point of it, of my healing journey was understanding that I've already gone through it. And in order for me to heal, I have to accept that I am a victor in all of this. I'm not a victim of anything that has happened to me. So um, I think the most important thing for me to understand what healing really, really meant was to be stripped of all the crutches, having to depend on therapy or people or um, the drinking or, you know, numbing any sort of pain. Man. But just being, I, I had to rid myself of myself and turn to my only source, which is God. 
um, thank God that I was raised um, by a woman who is a Bible school teacher and who taught me the basics of what God is and that I can't get anything else from anybody but from God first. I don't so, know what it is to be in your position, but is it possible to forgive the perpetrator? It is. You have to choose it daily. It's not, it's not, an, it's not a once-off thing. You have to choose it continuously. You know, um, otherwise, you don't forgive for that person. I didn't have him acknowledge it. I didn't have him say sorry, even with um, the verdict saying that he was found guilty and he still ran away. That did not or give him the right for, to forgiveness. But the forgiveness was for me. In order for me to understand that I need to heal, I needed to let go of what he did. Wow. I needed to understand that if I'm holding on to all of that pain, it does me no good. Yeah, well. It keeps me from fulfilling my purpose, whatever it may be. I had to relook at everything that happened and try to find the meaning of it and understand, am I meant, I mean, God, I've known you, I've served you. Why would this happen to me? What What is it meant to do? And once I spoke out and understood that a lot of other women have experienced this and didn't have the courage to speak out, that's when it started all making sense. So it, it became now my responsibility to seek God and heal so that I can tell everybody else that it's not an every day, it's not every day that I'm okay. Some days I do cry, but it's not because I'm thinking of the incident itself. It's just the pain of, I don't know, I, I can't explain it. I guess uh, it would be something that somebody who has gone through understands that, mm, I don't know what the feeling is, but I'm here to testify and say that most days I'm okay. Amen, amen. What a powerful you know? testimony. God moves and healing isn't just a once off as well, much like forgiveness. It's not just a, okay, I've healed now. It's something that you choose and you have to work on and you have to give yourself the time, read, talk, listen to your source, quieten down, cry if you need to cry, feel every feeling, but don't stay in it. Thank you so much, Newa. Thank you. I thank you for sharing thank that. Thank you for having me. Uh, and, and, and we appreciate that. All the it, way in Soweto. What a powerful it, testimony. It, if yes, I Bishop. May, if I may, I think it's important to understand uh, that the, con the concept of God has to be internalized. Yes. And that allows for healing. But as I was listening to her, there was something else that uh, allows for healing. Uh, in terms of the victim being able to come to a place of healing and those of us who are onlookers can begin to empathize or, or sympathize with both sides, perpetrators okay. and victims. And the key yes, that bridges that and makes healing easier is justice. Mm. Justice is spiritual. Hear me when I tell you. Because if I have been victimized and my victimization continues into perpetuity and the perpetrators never are brought to a place where they become accountable and responsible for their behavior, you're going to continually leave me with a naked and open wound. When, it okay. when the justice comes, when you receive the recompense for what you did to me and you begin to feel the pain and your family begins to feel the pain of your behavior as my family is feeling the pain of what has been done to me then those of us who are outside can reach for both families because we're saying you have caused your family a lifetime of rebuke and retribution and having to explain the ridiculousness of your action. My family has suffered the pain of me being twisted and me being debilitated by your savage behavior. And my right. whole family now is up in arms and they want to come to get you. But if justice takes place, now the victim's family can reach 
to the perpetrator's family because both of us are in the same situation. Now, if now, now. that's been the problem why we have not healed as a people because number one is they continue to do the same thing with a different name under a different umbrella. It's the same thing they have continued to do and we cannot come to a place of healing because there is no justice. I, and I, notice, I, I like notice what God does with justice. Justice and mercy. You cannot begin to have mercy unless you have found justice. Hey, Bishop. Can I add something, Bishop, on what you're saying? Help me, Bishop. The, the, the case, uh, while the lady is talking, my mind is actually on another level altogether. That what happened to this lady is actually the state of the African nation. That the rape and the abuse and the violation that has happened. Mm. Word for word with what you are saying, Bishop Noel Jones, in terms of how does the victim deal with the issue? I'm looking at how does the economic, political state of Africa, okay. from the French, the Italians, and the Anglo-Saxons, deal with the same problem that she has dealt with. And in the way that she is saying it, that she had to find herself. And you find yourself. All right. Not by being washed by the, by, by the perpetrator. You, you find yourself not by having the perpetrator smoother you or condescend over you or downplay on you okay. or, f or make you feel like you are a victim because of whatever reason. So, so I'm, what I'm hearing actually here is not just a story of a personal life. I'm hearing a story of a country. I'm hearing a story of a continent. Yes, and sir. if we can learn something from how she coped with her survival technique, yes, we, we may just okay. need to find out how, as Africa, can we also begin to deal with our abusers, right. who right now, after abusing us, they want to tell us how to moan, how to deal with pain. Oh, Is my that, goodness. If that helps. Oh, my goodness. When I hear these arguments, when I hear these arguments, and, and Bishop Mopunga say we as Africa, the difficulty... It's narcissistic. It's narcissistic. Ooh, that after you have abused me, boy, you tell me how to feel stuff. pain. <laughs> let me let me get somewhere here, and I want um, your inclusion, Yvette. Africa does not have a unified voice. I hear us all say, if Africa, we were to do this, we were to do. We don't have a unified voice. Right next door, you have a different policy. You have a different manifesto. Um, Zanu PF has its different views on what constitutes economic freedom. ANC has its own views. And, and, and it, it happens in families. We, I come from a big family. My definition of wealth generation is different from other people's definition of wealth generation. We are on a WhatsApp family group. I don't post certain things because I might offend some people, even they are positive. But if we are all progressive and unified, we will be able to complement and embrace each other. Is it possible to have a unified voice? Ooh, I think <laughs> when no. you look at the, 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 you have to always look at the symptom, right? The symptom. The symptom is not having unified voice. Okay. The root cause, right, is what has happened over generation. And I think that's what Bishop is trying to tap into. Okay. To say there has been this generational, you know, trauma. Right? right, financially, economically, physically, right? Because if your parents have been beating, 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 and for me as somebody who works with people that have been through abuse, I always put the same way that an individual goes through healing is the same way that a country goes through healing, hey. right? And the abuser, what they do first is first, they first um, change your identity, right, about who you are. So if someone is trying to abuse a woman, they will say, you are nothing, right? They'll break you down so that mm. you feel like nothing. Okay. When you feel disempowered, then they take what is of value, right? Mm. Because wow. now you don't associate value with anything that's around you because you remember, yourself. you are nothing, okay. right? And then so in Africa, it was a divide and conquer thing, hey. right? That's the root. And we fight amongst ourselves. We fight amongst, you know, there's colorism, there's all types of things. Oh, the rich, the poor, the this, the that, right? Instead of fighting the system, mm. right? And the system is that we can have a unified voice, but it's going to take a lot of work. And the thing is, we, people like, like leaders, for example, I do business coaching as well. In right. every business coaching thing that I do, I include healing, right? Because why? Somebody's going to attract wealth into their life. They're going to build the business, but it will fall apart because they don't know how to keep the money and they don't like, see their own worth. I love right? that. So the thing is, healing as a nation is holistic. 
okay. right? L- that's what Bishop has been trying to say, to say that healing is holistic and to get to that place of a unified voice, yes. right? You have to talk to each other first. Why weren't you talking to each other? Because somebody decided to put borders. Why did somebody put, put, put borders? Because they're trying to take your wealth. Why were they trying to take your wealth? Because they actually didn't have any resources. Why didn't they have any resources? Well, they ex- <laughs> exploited their own resources. Can you imagine in Europe, you're going to find game, game animals. They killed everything. They ate all the animals. And on top <laughs> of that, and on top of that, right? If look at us as Africans. I'm not laughing. We lived in abundance, in wealth. We yes. respected the earth, right? Yes. When they came in, they said, we are not civilized enough, right? This is civilized. This is this is what civilization looks like when you're overeating. And then now, hundreds of thousands of years later, you have people that aren't healthy anymore. Vegan. They took away ritu- r- certain rituals that we have as Africans and said, this, this one is evil, right? It's demonic. It's demonic. And even those rituals themselves allowed us to, for example, in Africans, because I work with pe- healing people that have like the young, young lady that called, right? Yes. That have been through rape, yes. right? If you look at through jur- like certain journeys, there's a ritual for everything in African culture. True. Whether you're going to manhood, there's a ritual for that. Okay. When you're becoming a woman, there's a ritual for that. When you're getting married, there's a ritual for that. Then they'll tell you there's no mentorship in Africa. We all hate each other. But then they first took away those rituals that we had initially, ah. right? And now we are lost. We have, we, we have fences. We don't talk. Africans could talk. Who are the biggest storytellers ever? Africans. Africans. Sarungano, Sarungano. There's a Zulu one. I don't know how you say it. Nungano, Shona. <laughs> right? Yeah. We've been telling stories. We are good communicators. So now, so, so he, 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 I like what you're saying because yesterday, Bishop, I think um, there was a leap in our conversation. And one of them was to identify African medical solutions mm. for the current problems that we're dealing with. And we went through a variety of products. Mm. We went through... as you know, um, uh, as ancient as Impepo. Don't you think it's time now to disrupt the pharmaceutical space? Because all solutions for every problem we're dealing with, yesterday I was shocked. We have it in the continent. We, we grow it in our backyard. I have an aloe plant in my yard. You know what an aloe does? An aloe, uh, man. Tabos, let me just cut you short. Please go ahead. Pharmaceutical companies yes. are not interested in our health. Our sickness and disease is their profit. Woo! Bishop. Say that again. I hey! The world needs to hear that. Hey! And, and Bishop! Most, and most doctors aren't concerned about your health because it's sickness that pays them. That's man, why... We that's have- why... That's why we sit so hard on people who give herbs and people who are, believe in natural I agree, Bishop. healing, natural strength, natural immunization from diseases. And that's a serious problem because we believe in taking medicine. Uh, let me give an example of what I'm saying. Uh, Go ahead, Bishop. Uh, if you look over history, you will find that, that uh, uh, the blind man, uh, you know, my, my mind is a little slow right now, but before Stevie, there was Ray Charles. Ray, there was Ch- Ray Charles. Ray Charles, Ray Charles yes. was on drugs for years and years and lived to be 70 plus years old. Many of the earlier performers were on heroin, heroin. They were taking all kinds of illegal drugs. And they okay. lived, yes, many of them died early, but not too many. The guys lived to be old and to get Look at up Miles Davis. Age. Uh, yeah, and they, they did. Now, Michael died at, uh, at 50. Uh, uh, Prince died at 57. Uh, go over it, uh, see where, where my girl died. Uh, Whitney, and g- go over and look at all that. And those were prescription medicine. You see, at the end of the day, the doctors want to prescribe medicine. It is said in America that the pharmaceutics cults expect the doctor to prescribe medicine within seven minutes of your visit. So hey. understand now that you have all the resources to keep people from getting sick. But here's the next problem. The next problem is to eat healthy and to get the right nutrients in your system costs money. You can that get a, true. you can get a, a in America, you can get broccoli, you can get one stale broccoli 
for seven dollars. But you can get a hamburger for 99 cents. <laughs> so, so what you gonna do? And, and to, to, to go to something earlier, isn't it interesting that now that the French, the English, the Dutch, uh, uh, the, the, and, the, uh, are, and the Spanish are out of Africa, now that colonization is over, now the Americans and the Chinese wanna colonize. Hello. Hello. When, when are you all gonna stop this foolishness? Human beings in harmony with nature is the highest civilization. Woo! Yes, Say that one more time. Human beings in harmony with nature. That's a treat. Is the highest form of civilization. Yes. All other civilizations of putting carbon in the air, concrete blocks, carpets in our houses, hamburgers for 99 rand, eating, drinking sewage water that has come from your toilet, mm. back to the municipality and back in your tap. That's not life for crying out loud. Mm. So when you look at the Bushman who is living in the Kalahari right now, yes. who owns nothing, <laughs> builds nothing, but has everything. Human beings with... Living in harmony. Yes. is the highest form of civilization. When the moon comes, the Bushman knows where the antelopes are, where the water is now coming from, when the rain seasons are coming. And in as much as we think that we can create Africa into a concrete jungle. Yes, sir. The question is when we are a concrete jungle, when the whole of Africa looks like Senten. Yeah. Okay, let's just take Senten. Yes. What quality of water are we going to be drinking? What quality of air are we going to be breathing? Hey. What quality of food are we going to be drinking? Now, hey. right now, some people in America, I was reading the other day, some white people undress themselves in, in, the, in the forests of Amazon and they go hugging trees. Please forgive us. <laughs> We've destroyed nature. <laughs> what we have in Africa is organic. Yes. So it is the highest form of civilization. So we should fight to protect it. Because the name development, when you hear a development in a village, you're talking concrete. You're talking... Gas is in the air. When you're talking development, you must see carbon yeah. pipes pumping carbon monoxide in the hey. air. Then there's hey. development hey. there. So where there's pollution, that's where development is. So you the we should... language, the language we use is also very important. Yeah. Because developing, then they've already created an idea. Once someone labels something, then you believe it. Okay. Someone, if, say, if someone says you're a developing country, but you, like Bishop said, what he's saying is how we used to live before everything else changed. Come right? on. So when someone says you're developing and then you receive it, you don't see your own value. You're like, oh, something's missing, which means I must develop. You know, if someone comes and says you're not a complete form of work, you're like, okay, what must I do to become a complete hey. form of work? But that is based on the perspective of somebody who again colonized you and so forth. So we are returning to who we are, right? We're not a, we're not developing. We don't like anything. We've never liked anything. No, we the never. The biggest thing is that we're told that we lack something and then you go, we've been spending the rest of our lives trying to become something. And whether that's on an individual basis or right. on a collective basis right? right because there's collective consciousness okay. and until collective consciousness says this land here has value we can't move forward because for example for me my grandmother now as a movenda yeah my grandmother has an orchard right when I grew up, there was beans, there was morogo, there was Avocado, <laughs> yeah, there was mango. everything, right? And even now, when you go back, we still have that. Most people don't have land, and I think that's why some of the land is the biggest thing because right. that is where that's what feeds you, right? So it's it's about returning to who we are, who we are. Think we of all the people that back. move from the rural areas to the city to live to live in a small block. Right, a small little block like this, but yeah. you left home saying, you know what, I'm going to be rich. You left the wealth at home. You the wealth was always with you. Home. It never left you. It was within you. It was around you. So that is the shift that the needs healing. To I'm here, the healing I'm here talking about. Yeah. At a deeper level. Yeah. It is a psychological healing. Yeah. Where we think that our sense of worth. Yes. Is found in Eurocentric definitions of success. Woo! A car underneath, a small little flat in sun, Sundowns, yeah. Sunhest, yes. and you think you've made it. No. But the quality of food, the quality of water, and the quality of Bishop. air that you are breathing is actually substandard. Yay. So who is healthier right now? The people in the rural areas don't even know what load shading is all about. They don't know what quarantine is all about. Yay. They don't know what... Uh, they're, they're free. Right. In the villages there, people are not... Breathing clean air. They are living. You don't even need a mask so, there. So, so, out loud. so, 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 Bishop Jones, get ready to sign a check for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. There's a piece of land for eight million. You put four million down for four million rands. I put four million. That's two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for you. We're gonna buy huge piece of land where we're gonna grow this 
mature, we're going to find this mtsonyana is the plant. We're going to grow mtsonyana, we're going to grow vegetables, and we're going to build this and take it from the bottom the straight into the market. We judge everything by money. And I, kept, I keep telling people, I've said it for years, and I'll say it again, that the devil is not the meanest animal in the zoo. It's the love of money. And the, the problem that we have had to exist with as, uh, as, as people of color, because God placed us in lands and in climates where everything was available to us. If you, if you notice the folk who are coming from the, from the equator, all of us are docile. We're not fighters. We're not belligerent. We don't kill. We, don't, we only kill what we need to eat. We're not killers. We know how to restore, the Bible says, and replenish. We have always lived with nature, but we fell prey to the folks who declared they were civilized. But what I've discovered is that the civilized are the people with the more efficient weapons. Because what they have been doing is that the Normans have been killing the Anglo-Saxons and have been killing the French, have been fighting the English. They have done all of that because they've had no resources. And then somebody looked down here at Africa, saw a group of people who were divided because we had different tribes and a whole lot of stuff. But we did not have the desire to go and wipe a group of people out, subject them to our own narcissistic avarice, avarice and go after everything for ourselves and then turn around and hate the people you took it from. And the problem is the victor writes history. So that's why we I, I, have I, have, I, have, I have a project for us. I have a project for us, Bishop Noel Jones. I want me and you to do something that is radical. Yes, sir. I want us to, I want us to buy a ticket into London, me and you. Okay. And I want us to go and stand at the banks of the River Thames. Yes, sir. And I want us to rename it. And they say, me and you are going to say we discovered the river. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm telling you. But what we need to do, I, and I agree, with, I agree with, with, with Touch, what we need to do is get together. Those of us who understand what to do, we need to do it. Bring Bishop. Hey! Bishop, that's off the chain. Thank you. Thank you, Bishop. Man. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you. Bishop, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We love you. I love you, my brother. I love, I love you, my you. brother. Thank you to my wonderful sister over there. I thank God for Corona, man. I thank God for Corona. I would have never met you. Now, here we are. <laughs> <laughs>